In this video, I'm going to show you five key metrics that you should be tracking if you're working with HR analytics and also what kind of data you need in order to calculate them and also how to do them in Power BI. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. HR metrics or human resources metrics is a key part of the business and it allows the organizations in the business to have a pulse on how the organization is doing based on their sort of human capital management. Maybe they want to know how their workforce is doing, maybe they want to know how many people are leaving or why people are leaving. These metrics are important to give a general overview of the workforce, where our strengths are, where our weaknesses, opportunities for improvement, and trends that have happened in the past and what could happen in the future. Now in this video, we're gonna go through some of the key metrics that in my perspective, you should be tracking if you're working with HR analytics. Now there's a lot to cover when it comes to HR analytics. So to keep this video short, we're gonna just keep it to five. And the examples that I'm going to use, I'm gonna to try to keep it as simple as possible so you can follow along. Also bear in mind that some of these metrics have different variations uh, depending on the business or the organization that you belong to. So just keep that in mind when I'm going through the demo. So the first metric that you should be tracking is the headcount which is essentially the total number of employees that you have in your organization. There are a couple of different variations for this, but the simplest one is to just count the number of active employees that you have. So for this, we're gonna move to my demo. You'll need a list at a minimum, a list of your employees and a category that distinguishes um, whether that employee is active or inactive. So here in this demo, we have a table here. You see, this is the list of our uh, fake employees and you'll see that we have them uh, active and inactive. Now, for you to get a count of this is actually pretty simple. You don't need to write any DAX code at all. So we'll just create a new card here. We will go to the table and we'll go, let's say, um, I want you to count the number of employees in this card. We'll change the aggregation to a count. So it gives us everyone, but we just want to count the number of active employees. So we'll drag the employment status on the filter, filter on this visual, and then we'll check active. So that will give you the number of active employees out of that table. So pretty easy, right? But what if you don't have the active or inactive status? You just have, let's say, a start date and an end date. Now you can do this as well, but it requires a bit of a setup. So here's an example of what I mean. You can see here in our table, we have a list of employees from our system. We have uh, two informations about them. We have their hire date, which is when they started and when they were terminated um, on the right hand side here. And think about the type of calculation that we need to do here. So first, what we want to know is if that employee is an active employee. And active for our perspective means that uh, their start date was before the current date right now. But not only that, that the termination is either in the future or that it's blank. So it means this person is a current staff. So the first thing that we'll need to do is we'll need to create and use our calendar table uh, to create an inactive relationship between them. And I'll show you why you need that uh, later on. Um, but for this uh, demo, you'll need to create a calendar table, which I've harped about in the past. So this is how you do it. There's a code there. Um, however, if you want to know how to do it yourself and why you should do it, uh, I covered it in a separate video. Anyway, now we're gonna go to the model view here. We're gonna bring in the head count here. This is the table that I was showing earlier. And then we'll bring the calendar and we'll create a, a relationship, termination dates and hire dates. We want to keep both of them inactive at the moment. So inactive means that uh, you will see that the dotted line uh, for both of these relationships. Next, we're gonna go back to the report and create a new measure. So I'm gonna go here, new measure. We're gonna name this one headcount, pretty simple. So let's start writing. So let's start with calculate first. 
because we want to add some filter context to this. Um, for our expression, we want to count the employees. So we're gonna write count me the head the employment IDs in the headcount table. And then here is where we add the filter context. So this one will be uh, hire date is less than or equals to calendar date. And we want to do something like this. Termination date is greater than calendar date or if the termination date is blank. So it's exactly what I described before it is what this calculation does. So it counts the employee if their hard date is in the past and if their termination date is either in the future or if it's blank. So that's what it means for a headcount or a person to be active. It looks a little bit confusing right now, so I will just demonstrate to you what it does. So I'm gonna drag this measure into my report here. So it gives me a 497. So this basically says that currently we have 497 active employees in our system. However, how can we validate this though? So we can do that actually pretty easily. So um, remember we created that uh, inactive relationship. Uh, so we're gonna use the calendar table now, the one that we've created in uh, a relationship to. So we're gonna have a year month there um, and then we're gonna drag the headcount. Uh, but also what we're going to do in this table that we have here on the right hand side we're going to add the headcount measure here. So it will show one if that is an active employee, uh, depending on the role context. So in this case, you will see, for example, this person is a, a headcount. It shows one because this person has a higher date of uh, in the past and their termination date is empty. So that means they have not left the company yet and you'll see that that number adds up to 497. So that is how we prove this. So let's change the filter context here. So let's say uh, we can see here in December of 2017, we have 279 headcount at that time. Uh, so how do we know if that is correct? So we can click that, uh, the year month, and it will give us 279. And then we can just validate it here. So what we're looking for are employees that have a higher date of before December 2017, and that they are either uh, have a termination date in the future, or they weren't terminated uh, during this time. And you'll see it sort of matches up to what we expected here. So you'll see, for example, Susanetta has a higher date, uh, was hired uh, two years ago, 15th of November, 2015, and termination date is in the future in 2020. So this person is a headcount for that year month, and so that makes it valid. So the next metric that you want to measure is the offer acceptance rate. So this is a great metric to track the offers that are being sent to candidates and how well they're doing. The offer acceptance rate calculation is actually pretty simple. It's just the total offers that have been accepted divided by the total offers made. Low offer acceptance rate means that we are pushing out a lot of offers that not a lot of candidates are accepting. So this metric could be used to potentially look for improvements and opportunities for improvements when it comes to uh, the competitiveness of the offers or the whole employee experience. So at the minimum, you'll need a candidate level information, so candidate names, uh, and their offer status. So if they accepted the offer or they're being offered or if they rejected the offers. And if you have other data associated with those type of offers, so the offer date, even better because you can even dig through uh, the offer acceptance rate per date. So let's create a few cards first to just validate and just make sure we know what we are uh, calculating here. So we know that we want to get the total offers uh, that have been accepted. So first what we're going to do, we're going to go application ID. I'm going to put this in a card 
and we're just going to count this first of all. So it gives us the total number of applications that we have. Uh, and then we're going to filter this by offer status. And let's say we want to just give me the uh, number of offers that have been accepted. So 187. Uh, we also want to divide this to the total number of offers made. So we'll do the same thing once more. We're going to add a, another uh, card here. Do application ID. Uh, we're going to do count once more. Offer status uh, will filter everything. So give me everything except uh, offer accepted. And actually, we want to filter out not offered as well because we want to just uh, understand uh, how well are the offers that are we are sending out. So not offered means we haven't sent them yet. So we will just uh, exclude that. And basically the offer acceptance rate is this number 187 divided by 592, which if I use my trusty calculator here, 187 divided by 592 will be about 31.6% acceptance rate. So now that we know the number that we're looking for, let's try to do this calculation in Power BI. So let's create a new measure to keep it simple. We'll name this one offer acceptance great and then we'll create a few variables to hold these uh, these cards that we have here so first we're going to create one for offers accepted which we will do by doing a calculate here we want to do a count of So we want to just count the applications where the status, the offer status is equals to offer accepted. Next, we want to create another variable for the total. So we want to do of total offers is calculate. Again, we're going to do count application ID and then we're going to say if the offer status is not equals to not offered, count it. So now that we have those two variables, let's return and let's divide these two. So we'll create a divide. Uh, simply offers accepted against the total offers and that should give us the value that we want so if we do this so we have an offer acceptance rate of 0 0.24 so 24 percent acceptance rate which is a little bit different from the value that we have in the calculation here so let's try to figure out why hmm. so it looks like here we have the offer accepted, uh, 187, and ah, here we go. So this is the problem. So I also excluded, it seems like it, uh, offer accepted here from the total, which should be 779. So what I think will happen now, if we try to do 187 divided by 779, it will give us 24% which is exactly what we have here in our measure. So what's even better is because in this example, we have offer dates as a value. So when the offer was made, this means that we can look at this uh, offer acceptance rate, not just as a whole, but as a breakdown in different periods in time. Uh, so to do that, uh, we need to create a, a relationship between the calendar and our table here. So we're going to go back to the model view here. We're going to drag in offer acceptance rates and calendar. We'll create a relationship between the dates. So now we can use this calendar table as uh, our filter slicer. So we're going to add year month here. So now that we have that we can simply add offer acceptance rate measure 
So here you can see the offer acceptance rate total 24.01% and also breakdown of it over time. So in this table, you'll see the breakdown of the offer acceptance rate per month. So you'll be able to see which months had the low offer acceptance rate and sort of use that as a way to do root cause analysis on what happened in those months. The next metric that is good to track is the employee turnover rate, which is basically the percentage of employees leaving the business. It's a good metric to track because it lets you understand uh, if you have a workforce that is uh, slowly dwindling and also look for opportunities on how to improve your employee experience in order to improve retention rate, which is the percentage of employees that are staying. So the minimum requirements that you need to calculate the turnover rates is uh, the average headcount uh, in a certain period of time and the total levers, uh, both of which I've already um, aggregated here in our table. And the formula to calculate the employee turnover rate is simply total levers divided by the average number of employees. So in this case here, you'll see in our table um, at the bottom, we have some aggregations here uh, gives you the total levers here um, in this period of time, which is a total of 60. Uh, that is fine. Um, and then we want to divide this by the average number of headcounts. Now, uh, this aggregation is not correct because it just adds up all the headcounts for each of those dates. But what we can do is we can change the summarization of this to be average. So now you will see that it gives us the average headcount for that period of time, which is 492.67. So 60 divided by 492, 60, 492.67, multiply by 100. This is basically our employee turnover rate. So now that we know how to calculate this, let's create a measure to do exactly this. So we're going to create a new measure here. Uh, I'm going to name this one turnover rate. And then we're going to create a couple of variables to hold uh, the numbers that we want. So first we want to create something called uh, uh, total levers. And then we're going to do sum. of levers. Pretty simple. Next, we're going to create one for average headcount, which we're going to do average headcount, which will be the turnover table. Now that we have those two variables, let's return it. I'm going to do Divide once more. Levers. And then average headcount. So let's have a look at this. Put this in a card. And then change it to a percentage. So here we go. So 12.18% is the turnover, which is exactly what we have in our calculator here. The next metric that you should track is the absence rate. So this metric is good because it allows you to track how many working days were lost from the different types of absences within your organization. At the minimum, you'll need this data in order to calculate the absence rate. First, you'll need the headcount, which is the total number of active employees in your organization. Next, you'll need the total available working days. So here in our table, we have working days here, which shows us the total number of working days available for that month within that year. And the third is the number of absences that were taken in that month. So here in our table, we've conveniently aggregated all of this data for you. And the formula to calculate the absence rate is pretty simple. It's just the number of absence days divided by the total employees multiplied by the working days. So let's try to do that in action. Let's create a new measure for this. We're going to name this one absence rate. So first we're going to create a new variable called absence 
days, which will be average of the absence days. Next, we're going to create the average headcount, which will be average um, yeah, average headcount here and didn't mean to press enter. And lastly, we'll need to create another one, which is the average working days, which we'll use average once more, um, absenteeism working days. Right, so now that we have all the variables that we need, we'll do a return and then we'll create a divide. So the if you remember, the formula is pretty simple. It will be absence days, um, divided by the employees, which is the headcount, multiplied by working days. So if hit enter, we drag that measure here on a card. We'll change this into a percentage and it gives us 0.86% absence rates. Now, one great thing about the fact that our table is already aggregated by uh, dates is uh, this measure that we've created here changes based on the context. So overall, uh, for the whole uh, history that we have here is a 0.86 absence rate. Um, however, if you drag the absence rate on this table here, you actually are able to see how the absence rates are for uh, different periods of time. So you can see which months had the highest absence rates and use it the same way as you use the other ones as a means to uh, analyze or find the reasons why you had such high absence rates for those periods. So the fifth and final metric that I think you should track is the training completion rate. So as an organization, you want to ensure that your induction trainings are completed. A low completion rate could pretty much impact the business, especially if you have trainings that are mandatory or compliance trainings. At minimum, you will need employee level information. So em employees on an individual basis per row and then their training status. So if they've completed their training, if they have not started it, or if they've started it, but they've not finished it. To calculate this one is actually pretty simple. So we're just gonna go straight to it. So we're gonna create a new measure here in, in our table. We're gonna name this one completion rates. We're gonna create a couple of variables once again because we need to hold some of our values. So we're going to create this one completed. I'm going to do calculate and we want to count training completion name doesn't matter. And then for the filter, we want training status is completed. So that's the first variable. And now we need to divide this by the total number of um, people that needs training. So we're just going to copy all of this. Well, actually, no, we don't have to. We're just gonna write another one. So all, and then we're just going to do a count of employees. So that will be the total. Now we're going to return this and then we're going to divide. So we want to divide completed by all. So that will give us, if I change this into a card and then I change the value to a percentage. So here we go. So it says to us that we have a completion rate of 31% uh, for our total headcount. So this number tells us that uh, within our whole organization, only 31% of our employees have completed their training. However, with this calculation, we also included employees that haven't started their training. So there's a different variation for this metric that you sometimes want to see. So let's say you want to know uh, the completion rates for your trainings but only for those that have started it but not completed it. 
uh, you want to exclude who hasn't started the training at all because you're trying to find out maybe there's something in the training materials that needs to be improved uh, and look for opportunities for improvement. So we can do the same thing, but just change it a little bit. So we're going to do exactly that. So we're going to go back to this measure here. I'm just going to copy it just to save us some time. I'm going to create a new measure. We're going to name this one completion rates two, And then we're going to create, uh, change the all slightly here. So instead of counting all the employees, we're going to add a filter to that. So I'm just going to copy the completed variable. And then here we're going to say, um, give me everyone except the ones that says not started. So that's it. So that's the completion rate uh, for those that have started it, but hasn't finished it. If we put that in a card here and then change it to a percentage. So there you go. So the, these are your numbers uh, at the moment. So overall, you have 31.9% completion rate for all the people that have completed it. Um, and out of the people that have started the training, uh, there's a completion rate of 50%, which is relatively higher than uh, the overall. You can even take this one step further because we have this start date as sort of a date of when they started or when they started the training, you can you know look for some trends of when uh, they've completed it or when the completion rates were at its highest or lowest. So to do that, we're going to do the same thing that we did with uh, the offer acceptance rate, which is to use the calendar table as uh, our row context filtering. So we're going to go back to the model here. We're going to add the uh, training completion rates and the calendar. We're going to create a relationship between the two dates. So the date here and the start date here. And then now we can use the calendar as a filter. So we're going to drag the year month here and then we're going to give the completion rates. So we can add this one. We can add both. So it gives you in this table, not just the overall completion rate that we have here on the card. So you'll see here at the bottom, but also a breakdown of it um, by month. So you'll see, okay, so which month had the lowest completion rates and you know, find some reasons why those numbers were there in the first place. And that's really it for this video. I know that uh, there's a lot to take in and there were a lot of examples that we went through, but I hope this was really useful for you to know what type of metrics are really important when it comes to analyzing, uh, you know, HR data that will help your organization look for opportunities for growth or improvement. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.